I'm sure you're all familiar with the term movie magic. But what does that really mean? Film in and of itself is an illusion, and like all magic tricks, if done well, can captivate, wow, and amaze audiences beyond comprehension. That being said, the process of making a film is quite complicated. How do you create something that has a profound effect on an audience? How do you make audiences believe what you're showing them is actually happening? Every filmmaker is faced with this problem before they even step foot onto set. So to put it into words, I'd say a large part of filmmaking is problem solving. And for a filmmaker, it's important to understand how your departments work to determine which techniques are required for successfully selling an illusion to an audience. So I wanted to take the time today to show you some of my favorite examples of what I consider to be true movie magic and how directors have collaborated with their departments to come up with creative solutions during the filmmaking process. But before we begin, this video contains some clips from horror movies with monster and gore effects. While they're totally rad, some people might find them creepy or disturbing. Don't be alarmed, because you see, <laughs> it's only a picture. Okay, let's get started. Lights, camera, action! First off, we're going to discuss different departments and concepts and layer them on as we go. Let's start with editing, because a lot can be accomplished with a simple, well-placed cut. <laughs> Editing allows you to creatively stitch separate moments together in order to make the action appear to be continuous. A stuntman could be performing an action that's too dangerous for the actor to do, and then you cut to the actor finishing that action. And then when edited together, it's seamless. Having some sort of idea ahead of time of where one shot ends and another shot begins will ensure that you get the pieces you need to successfully create the illusion. Now you obviously can't edit without footage, so let's talk about cinematography. Determining which camera angles you use or shoot an effect from will play a huge role in whether or not the audience believes it's happening. Say you're trying to sell a punch. Action! Well, you could have the actors actually punch each other. Or you can cheat it by placing your camera over one of their shoulders. They don't have to make contact at all. In fact, they don't even have to come close because the angle of the camera combined with editing sells the illusion. If your camera's positioned profile to the action, sometimes the illusion is broken, like in this shot from The Godfather where Sonny clearly misses by a mile. So determining where you put the camera means everything. Now editing, cinematography, and special makeup effects all go hand in hand. So say the script calls for a person to get stabbed through the hand. Now you obviously can't really stab someone through the hand, so how do you do it? Well, there's a number of ways to pull it off. In Taxi Driver, makeup artist Dick Smith came up with this solution with Martin Scorsese. This trick effect was done by filming the action of the knife going towards the hand. I think he had a retractable blade. And then there's a cut, and I attached a fake knife that had a handle here, and then a heavy wire linking it around to a blade. And when the film is edited together, you get the illusion of the knife going right through the hand. Marker. Now weapons can be very difficult to work with. Gun jam. Okay, once again, and action. Gun doesn't work. Cut. Cut. On El Mariachi, Robert Rodriguez came up with a creative editorial solution to a very similar problem. The only problem with having a real gun is that when you put a blank in it, it would jam like this. That's it. That's all it would give us. So what I would have to do in order to have a machine gun sequence is that I would have to shoot the barrel firing once from four different angles like this. What I did was I double cut the barrel fire, then I would get a shot of the bad guys getting squibbed so I could put a machine gun sound over it and make it seem like there was continuous fire going on. Okay, here's a sequence edited with that squib effect and with that machine gun effect. Think of a creative way to get around your problem. Safety is one of the main reasons why some of these gags even exist. Because you obviously can't shoot or dismember your actors. Your arm's off! No, it isn't. Well, what's that then? However, you can often get away with shooting or dismembering a dummy. <laughs> Dummies have taken quite a few beatings over the years and are often used to stand in in an actor's place. But again, with a well-timed edit, you can hardly tell the difference. 
If a cut goes by quickly, the audience doesn't have time to process all the information, so their imagination interprets what they might have seen. Special makeup effects artist Tom Savini has created several innovative gags throughout his career. On Day of the Dead, he worked with George Romero to show the impact of a real machete onto a prosthetic arm. Then they cut. Cut. And when they cut back, they switch to a specially made prop machete so that the actor can move their real arm and give some performance. Then they cut away again and return to the real weapon as the prosthetic is completely severed. A similar effect was achieved by alternating between a fake shovel appliance on an actor's face and a real shovel on a dummy's head. Okay, action. Now let's talk about puppets. How do you turn this on? Shake his legs around. Looks like he's killing you. Okay. Animating inanimate objects is often a challenge many filmmakers need to solve. And action! Does this look inanimate to you, punk? Puppeting dates back centuries and deserves a video in its own right for its invaluable contribution to film. Innovators such as Jim Henson, Frank Oz, and Stan Winston help push the art form forward, creating some of cinema's most beloved and terrifying characters. I said, Jim, I really feel that we can do a lot of this Terminator as a full-size puppet. The technology of the puppetry and the pushing of the animatronics for head and neck movement and eye movement and jaw movement, that was virtually the breakthrough of using puppeting and our animatronic technology to create realistic characters for motion pictures. Your puppets don't always have to be that sophisticated in order to be effective. Here, Ridley Scott breaks down the egg hatching scene in Alien, and it's really quite simple. I needed it to move, so I have sticks and poking look terrible. So we worked out a method of, on my hands with two rubber gloves on, washing up gloves, and all I'm doing is going like that. And so that's how that was done. Seems to have life, organic life. And then uh, him looking in, what he sees, and this is like that, explosion up into the camera, then cut, where I've got this attached to his face as he falls backwards. In Aliens, James Cameron worked again with Stan Winston in his studio to take the face hugger's movements to the next level. This scene is a combination of all kinds of different tricks, using editing, cinematography, and puppetry all stitched together. And it's this type of creative thinking that really gets me excited about film. Okay, so here's the scene. It was, in fact, a low-tech, high art, very interesting concept. And this little thing was running at you, running across the room, and it was virtually a pull toy. And then in addition to that, Cameron did some very clever things with reverse photography mixed with forward movement. The creature runs out and stops, and then it leaps onto the leg of a table and right at the camera. And what that was was place the, uh, a floppy stunt face hugger on the table, pull that back in the ground, run that in reverse, then we placed the face hugger back on the table leg and yanked it directly towards camera. And when you cut those pieces together, you see it run, jump, and leap at the camera. Oh, how cool was that? Okay, now that we're on the subject, reverse photography is a really fun trick to experiment with. Especially if you need something to hit a specific mark. Here's what they did in The Wizard of Oz. Gillespie drops a miniature farmhouse from the top of a soundstage. He shoots it in slow motion and later will reverse the film so the farmhouse appears to be falling into the camera. The floor of the soundstage is painted to look like a Kansas sky with some dry ice vapor for clouds. Oh. Reverse photography is also very commonly used in special makeup effects. Sometimes it's a lot easier to pull things in than it is to push things out. Like this shot in The Thing, where Rob Bottin pulls the spider legs into Norris's head and plays that in reverse. Um, what we 
did is implanted hair in, a, in a, just a little square piece of rubber and pulled the hair through. And when it's played in reverse, the hair grew out. Where the skeleton hand goes into his mouth, of course, what we did was we had a half skeleton hand and we put it in his mouth and on action, we would pull it out real quick. So when they reverse the film, it looks like it's going right into his mouth. Bruce is the king of acting in reverse. So as you can see, cinematography, special effects, and editing are all dependent upon each other to be assembled in a very specific way. Otherwise, these gags simply wouldn't work. Okay, now let's add some more departments into the mix. Production design. The environments that your story takes place is a character unto itself. The walls could be closing in. The walls are Don't just stand there, try and brace it with something! <laughs> Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. Don't be alarmed. No, 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 up here. Or you might think that a character's on the ceiling. Got pretty good at it, haven't I? The rotating room is a technical dance between the production design and camera department. Oftentimes, they'll strap a camera operator into a chair, while hydraulics physically rotate the entire room. As the room spins, the actor remains at ground level, while the camera operator travels overhead, now completely suspended upside down. Since the entire room is moving, there's no other point of reference, that is, unless another character is in the room. Now, to maintain the illusion, oftentimes that actor is safely strapped to the set, along with the camera operator, to rotate upside down as well, like in A Nightmare on Elm Street and 2001 A Space Odyssey. This technique was most recently used in Inception. The size, scale, and engineering behind this design is remarkable. The result is awesome, and it's pretty hard to fake convincingly otherwise. Production design also collaborates with makeup and wardrobe whenever they have to conceal an actor or hide a part of their body. Like most magic tricks, the magician's assistant isn't actually sawed in half. So holes are often cut into parts of the set for actors to pop their heads or torsos through. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you All right, that's enough of that. Another classic example that combines the efforts of these departments is the mirror gag. We're all familiar with the mirror gag, right? <laughs> I don't think so. To pull this effect off, you need doubles of everything. Doubles of the actor, as well as doubles of the character's wardrobe, as well as a complete mirrored replica of the room that production design, art department, props, and set dressing all have to create. And the final piece that really, really sold it was putting a double of the edge of the mirror frame on the backside, spaced slightly, and immediately that one detail totally sold the set. And action! In Terminator 2, they used a mirrored set to convincingly create the illusion of drilling into Arnold Schwarzenegger's head. However, this scene was ultimately cut from the final film. Now open the port cover. Pull to break the seal. Let's talk about forced perspective. Forced perspective is a really fun gag to play with. It's an in-camera optical effect that combines the efforts of many departments as well. Camera position is crucial in selling this gag because if the camera angle changes slightly, suddenly the illusion is now broken. You can creatively design your sets to appear as though they go on and on forever. What do they mean labyrinth? There aren't any turns or corners or anything. This just goes on and on. Nope, no it doesn't. Okay, well if you place your camera in just the right spot, you can make it appear as though a giant is flipping over a car. Just put a camera somewhere and you try to put one car where one car here and then the small car, the miniature car in there, and then you move them around until something in your brain says, oh yes, I buy that, this is working.
Miniatures can be used to great effect in creating this illusion. Perhaps the most impressive early hanging miniatures are in the 1925 MGM classic Ben-Hur. The lower part of the Circus Maximus set was built full size for the violent chariot race. Special effects artist A. Arnold Gillespie designed an elaborate hanging miniature of the upper portions of the arena. The miniature gallery included 10,000 tiny hand-operated figures that could stand and cheer on cue. Lined up perfectly in camera, this full-scale set and hanging miniature combined into one of the most impressive settings in Hollywood history. These in-camera force perspective tricks have been around for a very long time, but they were all limited in movement until cameras were able to be motion controlled. In Lord of the Rings, specially designed rigs were built that moved the camera, the sets, and the actors in perfect synchronicity so that the illusion of force perspective remained intact. This is the One Ring, forged by the Dark Lord Sauron in the fires of Mount Doom, taken by Isildur from the hand of Sauron himself. On top of that innovation, Peter Jackson used every other possible trick in the book to maintain the illusion of size relative to the character's world. His crew built identical scale sets, one large, one small. Wardrobe designed costumes for fake, gigantic people. We got some nice, cozy, hobbit-sized rooms available. And had exact scale duplicates of characters' costumes for smaller body doubles. You're late. Makeup also created masks for body doubles to wear for wider shots. If you look carefully, you can sometimes catch a quick glimpse of them. Wait for it. Mask. Shots were also designed for digital compositing in post-production, where the actors were scaled to size in the computer. No one knows it's here, do they? These films are a summation of utilizing almost every concept and department we've discussed, and by not resorting to one singular method, once all these tricks are edited together, used back to back, and in and around each other, the final result is... well, it, it's the Lord of the Rings. Alright, last one. Compositing. Compositing has been around since the beginning of cinema, and it's one of the first magic tricks of film. It's when you take separate layers of film and combine them into one. Some of cinema's most iconic and epic shots were composited together. The Emerald City painting, for example, had little holes, little pinpoint holes that they could light from behind so that it would appear to glow. It's beautiful, isn't it? But my personal favorite example of compositing is a much more subtle visual effect. It's how they remove Lieutenant Dan's legs in Forrest Gump. They place objects in the room, like a table, that'd be physically impossible for him to move through if he had actually had legs. So they shot the scene without the table and digitally composited it back in. And it's this type of creative thinking and problem solving that went into this simple trick that makes all the difference in believing what you're seeing. Now let's not forget the dummy. Even in a digital age, the dummy can still be used creatively. For Cheech's eye, I kind of figured that a dummy wouldn't look real enough in sunlight. So I shot Cheech on the ground, uh, laid the dummy in the same position, lined it up, put him together digitally, taking the eye cavity of the dummy and adding that to the real Cheech. That's why it holds up under scrutiny because it's not a dummy. And the eye was really shot there on the set. So you don't have to hide the dummy in a cut anymore. You can just composite them together. Okay, I can go on and on about things that get me excited about film, but we're out of time. These are all examples that have inspired me and hopefully has inspired you to think creatively about how you can use every tool available to you for telling your stories. At the end of the day, it all comes down to the story you're trying to tell. Ask yourself what's happening in the scene. What does the audience need to see to believe it's happening? And how can you creatively pull it off? To me, movie magic is all of these things coming together seamlessly in the end. And if you can pull it off, and if it's fun for your audience, then that's why we tell stories in the first place. So, that's it for today. Have fun, be safe, and good luck.